uh, in the last class we were basically looking at uh, uh, the stability of negative feedback systems and you know uh, over the last couple of classes we looked at we started off with a first order forward amplifier and we found that it is unconditionally stable. Unfortunately, the practical reality happens to be that the DC gain that you can get is is, uh, is very modest and uh, consequently uh, you will basically have uh, uh, you know while it is great, uh, it is not realizable in practice right. The high gain that we want is not realizable in practice with one stage. And then what did we do? We said okay well uh, the easiest way of increasing gain seems to be to simply cascade stages. So, we cascaded two stages and we found that the, the, cas the, the closed loop system is technically stable, but for all practical purposes the transient response has got. I mean if we want to realize the ideal of having a large loop gain at DC, then the quality factor of the closed loop poles is going to be you know uh, so high that the transient response uh, you know when you uh, you know excite it with uh, with a step for instance is going to ring for a very very long time and uh, in an amplifier that is actually quite undesirable right. Then we thought ok maybe you know it just so happens that the second order case we got unlucky and we said let us try and look at the uh, put three stages in cascade and now uh, you know uh, all hell breaks loose uh, the poles are now you know if uh, if a naught f uh, a naught cube f that is the dc loop gain uh, is greater than even 8 right we basically find that the uh, the closed loop system is is unstable okay now yesterday we actually solved the uh, uh, the uh, equations right and uh, we solved the uh, find, found the roots of the characteristic equation uh, and uh, you know uh, plotted the locus of the poles uh, as a function of uh, the uh, uh, the dc loop gain and you know we uh, we found when uh, the system becomes uh, uh, unstable right uh, as a uh, as another way of doing it i just want to cover this briefly right so remember that the closed loop gain is 1 over f times uh, loop gain of s by 1 plus loop gain of s and uh, if the poles are on the j omega axis. So, I mean the aim therefore is uh, to find uh, and in our case loop gain of s happens to be a naught cube f over 1 plus s over omega naught the whole cube ok. And yesterday we used root locus to find uh, uh, for what a naught cube f the the poles will just be on the j omega axis. So, the uh, you know this is an alternate way of of, uh, of uh, finding uh, coming up with the same answer uh, and the uh, uh, the approach is the following. If the poles are on the j omega axis anyway we know that they must be complex conjugate right uh, they must be at uh, plus minus j omega x correct what is the meaning of of uh, of uh, uh, you know if if you have a pole uh, at a certain complex frequency for a transfer function uh, what will you get when you evaluate the transfer function at that pole frequency yeah, ok. So, basically uh, uh, the uh, the transfer function when evaluated at uh, a pole frequency goes to infinity alright. So, now uh, there are poles at plus minus j omega x right. So, that for therefore, loop gain of of j omega x by 1 plus loop gain of j omega x must go to must go to infinity at uh, j omega x right. I mean so basically must go to infinity correct. So, if uh, this must go to infinity what comment can you make about the loop gain of evaluated at j omega x yeah. So, which basically means that loop gain of j omega x equal to minus 1.
ok. All right. So, if the so now if you uh, look at the loop gain function, it is a naught cube f, it is a complex function, it is 1 plus j omega x by omega naught the whole cube and this must be equal to minus 1, correct. So, it is a complex number on the left hand side. So, uh, how many equations do we get? Are you either real part, imaginary part or magnitude and phase. So, this basically leads to a naught cube f by 1 plus omega x square by omega naught square whole power 3 halves must be equal to 1. And what about the angle? Yeah, so tan inverse omega x over omega naught must be equal to all right. So, which basically means what omega x is root 3 times omega naught, which basically then leads to. So, I mean what are the unknowns that we are trying to find? A naught cube f and omega x, right? Omega x is root 3 times omega naught. So, what is A naught cube f? Yeah. So, which basically means that A naught cube f is a, because omega x square by omega naught square is now 3, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 to the 3 halves power is 8 and therefore, A naught cube f is 8 which is you know not surprising because this is exactly uh, this is what we expected anyway which we got from root locus analysis right so you know uh, so you know one way of basically uh, uh, checking you know if a, if a system is is uh, is uh, is close to becoming unstable right so if a system is close to becoming unstable what does it actually mean i mean uh, so, in other words, uh, uh, if the closed loop system has got poles on the j omega axis, so close to the j omega axis, what comment can you make about the uh, the uh, closed loop transfer function? It will be going to uh, to it will be the the gain will become very very large at a certain frequency, right? And uh, uh, if that happens, what I mean, uh, looking at this expression, uh, when do you think the gain can become very large at a certain frequency? So, when basically when the denominator is going close to 0 and that happens when uh, the loop gain evaluated at at uh, uh, some complex frequency basically at at at, at uh, some j omega x if that loop gain function is uh, is uh, uh, is coming close to this minus 1 which uh, mind you is basically magnitude is 1 the angle of the loop gain is if loop gain of some j omega is minus 1 the magnitude of the loop gain is 1 and what is the angle of the loop gain? The phase lag is basically 180 degrees, okay. If that happens, then you know that 1 plus loop gain basically goes to uh, uh, you know goes to 0 and then the 4 the closed loop gain goes to infinity, which is telling you that there is a there is a uh, there is a pole for the closed loop system at that frequency j omega. Does it make sense, folks? All right. So uh, anyway, so the question is, you know, okay, well, all this analysis is is fine, but uh, the real question is, you know, what do we do to fix this problem, right? So we want, as we discussed yesterday, we want to have the high DC loop gain, as well as, you know, uh, 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 stability, right? Because this a naught cube f being eight is uh, simply a non-starter. Correct. Okay. So uh, the basic idea is the following, and you know, again, we take inspiration from the fact that a first-order system is is uh, uh, has got none of these stability problems. So uh, the idea is, well, you know, uh, if I have a third-order loop gain function, the loop gain function, the magnitude of the loop gain function, basically, uh, if I all plot this on a log plot, right? So uh, you know, you, when I uh, mark this as a naught cube f. What actually it means is that what I am plotting is 
20 log a naught cube f. I do not want to keep writing this 20 log all the time and then make the whole plot very messy. Hmm? Okay. So, now if you plot the Bode plot of this, uh, this, uh, 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 this, uh, this guy, uh, how does this look like? So, let us say this is omega naught. How will the Bode plot of this uh, loop gain function a naught cube f by 1 plus s by omega d or omega naught whole cube, how does it look like? Well, yeah, the body plot is an asymptotic plot. So, it looks, uh, you know, and uh, mind you, this is log omega, okay. And after that, how will it roll off? Minus 60 dB per decade. So, this basically does something like this, okay. So, this is uh, uh, minus 60 dB per decade. So, you want to make this third order system look like a first order system. So, any uh, suggestions what can we do? Okay, let us say, okay, let me give you an analogy, right. Here is a stick, okay, all right. How do you make this stick smaller without touching it? Yeah, well, if you want to make this stick smaller without touching it, well, you draw a longer line next to it, right, uh, which basically is equivalent to saying that the small, large, etcetera are all relative terms, right. And if you want to make the stick longer without having to touch it, what do you do? Well, yeah, you uh, you know you put a stick smaller next to it, and then suddenly this becomes long, right? Okay. So uh, uh, so now uh, you know uh, using this as inspiration, uh, you know uh, what do you think we can do to make this look like a like a, uh, a first order system? Okay. So I mean, okay, all right. So uh, let's take a look at all, what all things are possible, and then you know rule out some uh, uh, some possibility. So this is the loop gain. So, what uh, uh, our Abhishek is saying here is, hey, you know, why do not I, uh, this is easy, why do not I just multiply this by 1 plus s by omega naught square. I will cancel off, right, uh, on paper it looks perfect, right, and I get a first order system, you know, move on, okay. What is the problem with this, uh, uh, with this approach? I mean, so you are cascading this uh, our forward amplifier with another block with this transfer function, correct. So, what is the gain of this transfer, this extra transfer function that you are introducing? What is the gain of that at infinity? It is infinite, right. So, it is impossible to get a gain of infinity at, at infinite frequency, correct. So, this is and, uh, uh, and remember that you can never realize a transfer function 0 without adding an extra pole. How do you realize a 0? There must be some memory element. That memory element is going to add? some poles, right. And uh, 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 presumably it is, uh, you know, physically impossible to get those poles to be at a higher frequency than, than omega naught, because if I was able to make such high frequency poles, I would make put them in my amplifier in the first place. You understand, okay. So, mathematically though, though this seems, you know, the easiest thing to do, you just multiply by, you know, uh, 1 plus s by omega naught whole square and then uh, we are done, right. So, that is not practical. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh, what else can we do? So, basically, the idea is well, you know, uh, um, uh, what if I deliberately multiply this by a function one by one plus s over omega d, where omega d is much much smaller than omega naught. First of all, is this practical? Can we do this? Well, you know, it is always difficult to make a slow person fast, but making a fast person slow is very easy, right, okay. So, you can always pull people down, is not it? So, to, uh, uh, to slow a fast uh, a system which is very fast, you know, uh, we are very good at doing it. So, uh, it is very straightforward. All that you take is, you know, find some node in the circuit, take a huge capacitor and put on that node, uh, the whole circuit will slow down. Right. Okay. So, uh, uh, what do you call? And if we choose omega d to be very very small compared to omega naught, how will the Bode plot of this resulting animal look like? Up to omega naught, it will basically be constant. 
after that what will happen? It will fall down at minus 20 dB per decade which is what it looks like for a first order system right and at omega naught it starts oh well yeah it starts to go down at minus 80 dB per decade ok. So, this is minus 20 dB per decade. and this is minus 80 dB per decade ok. And if I just showed you this part of the picture, ok imagine I covered up everything outside this uh, blue rectangle or blue square right and I showed you this picture and I asked you uh, you know what this red curve represents what would you say? Well, you say well you know this looks like a first order system ok. So, uh, uh, what do you call? Uh, so, this uh, basically is the uh, is the um, uh, is the basic uh, uh, idea behind trying to make this is how you try to make uh, it I mean please note that the red curve corresponds to actually a it actually corresponds to a fourth order system right, but it looks like I mean uh, you know over within quotes the important frequency range right, we will come back to what it means to say important frequency range over frequencies of practical interest it looks like a first order system right. So, let me make let me label this, this is uh, you know uh, uh, 0 dB or 1 hmm? ok, all right. So, uh, this pole this omega d is called the the dominant pole and uh, uh, this basically uh, uh, you know uh, is dominant pole because it it basically pretty much uh, uh, within course dominates the frequency response of of the loop gain function right. So, for all practical purposes therefore, this omega d is the most significant pole all the other this omega naught now you know as far as we are concerned are poles which are so far away from omega d that their influence on on uh, the uh, uh, frequency response of the system you know they only kick in in this particular example when the magnitude of the loop gain function has fallen way you know at the point at which the uh, the extra poles at omega naught the three extra poles at omega naught kick in right. We see that the magnitude of the loop gain is is way smaller than 1 right. So, going back to our into uh, you know our uh, observation that the uh, we are going to be only in trouble when the loop gain function becomes close to minus 1 comma when the loop gain function becomes close to minus 1 comma 0 is when the denominator goes to is goes to goes to 0 right and uh, you know where and uh, at the frequency at which the loop gain magnitude goes to 1 in this particular example where the dominant pole omega d is chosen to be so small compared to omega naught right that uh, 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 the 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 frequency at which the higher poles kick in at that frequency the magnitude response is already fallen to something which is very very small compared to 1 right. So, at this frequency what comment at, at the uh, unity gain frequency of the loop gain which is the which is the new unity gain frequency of the loop gain very good right. So, basically the new unity gain frequency of the loop gain is is uh, uh, is a naught cube f omega d approximately why because in this region this curve can be approximated by this expression a naught cube f by 1 plus is the magnitude of a naught cube by f by 1 plus s by omega d. So, it is a first order system with a dc gain of a naught cube f 
and a pole at at omega d does it make sense all right and we know very well that uh, you know at frequency is much greater than omega d you can neglect that one and the unity gain frequency of uh, this system is a naught cube f omega all right so at the unity gain frequency of this uh, dominant pole compensated system right so you know we have added we have stabilize the system by adding a dominant pole. So, this is often called dominant pole compensation. And uh, uh, so, at the unity gain frequency of, uh, of the dominant pole compensated system, the what comment can we make about the angle of the loop gain? Uh, a naught cube by 1 plus s by omega d what is the uh, you know what is the unity gain frequency a naught cube f omega d so what is the uh, angle of the loop gain at that frequency What is it? Tan inverse of minus tan inverse a naught cube f. And is a naught cube f a small number or a large number? Large number. So, what is tan inverse a naught cube f? Minus this is going to be approximately minus pi by 2, which is what you will see if you had a first order system. Correct? Okay. So, if you had a true first order system, you would see an angle of minus the angle at the uh, at the unity gain frequency for the loop gain function would be minus minus 90 degrees. Okay. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, if the angle of the loop gain is minus 90 degrees, what is that 1 plus loop gain? So, loop gain by 1 plus loop gain at a naught cube f omega d is what? What is the loop gain at, at uh, a naught cube f omega d? It is a loop gain is a complex number. One angle minus 90 degrees. So, basically it is minus minus j divided by 1 minus j correct. So, what uh, what is the magnitude of this complex number 1 by root 2 ok angle minus 45 what is that uh, uh, telling you? So, the closed loop gain remember is 1 over f times loop gain by 1 plus loop gain. At the unity gain frequency of the loop gain function, what is the closed loop gain? It is 1 by root 2 times 1 over f angle minus 45 degrees. And what does this mean? At what frequency will the magnitude of the gain of an amplifier go to 1 by root 2 times its free uh, it, its 3 dB bandwidth right. So, basically uh, this is something that we knew already ok and uh, 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 you basically will have uh, uh, when we worked out the math we saw that the unity gain frequency of the loop gain function for a first order system is the 3 dB bandwidth of the of the closed loop system right. This is I am just re parroting the same thing all over again right. There is nothing new here. 